I am going to take you on a week or two of exactly what I do with my sourdough starter. Now I have an 11 year old sourdough starter here that I've been maintaining all this time. And I get lots of questions about when do you feed it if you're going to make this thing? Or what about this? What if you keep it in the refrigerator for a week? So I'm going to be sharing that with you. I might end up doing two weeks because I'm not exactly sure how often I'm gonna use it this week. I don't have any meal plan because I'm not really a meal planner. I don't have this video planned out in any capacity. So I am just going to take you through exactly what I do as I do it. I've had this idea for a while, but I wasn't sure that, I feel like it'd be hard to get the camera out every time I'm using my starter, but I'm gonna do that. So yesterday morning, as you can see, my jar is super crusty on top because I don't wash it very often. I fed it yesterday morning. Probably it's been at this point about 30 hours since I've last fed this starter. It's been sitting out on my counter. So now it's time for me to either feed it again and use it or to put it in the refrigerator. Now, if it was up to here right now, I would just go and put it straight in the refrigerator. But since it's this low, I don't wanna put it away like that because I like to keep really large quantities of sourdough starter in case I wanna make something like pizza crust or waffles or pancakes. Those are no weight recipes where I will pull this out of the refrigerator and let's say it is Tuesday night at 5.30 p.m. I have no plans for dinner. I have some cheese and sauce in the fridge and in the pantry. I will make a quick pizza crust, which is probably one of these times during these next two weeks you're going to see that. So I don't wanna put it away this empty. Now I could, but then I wouldn't have enough to make four pizza crusts like I need to. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of flour and water. Now one of the most common questions that I get is how do you build your starter up to get such a large amount? And really, you can just add as much flour and water as you need to. Once your starter is established, there is no discarding as you're going to see with my method. There is no measuring, there is no weighing. It is so easy. I wouldn't have been able to keep a sourdough starter in regular use and rotation in my kitchen for 11 years now if it was complicated. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I know it's not the technical way. I know I'm probably gonna get some technical sourdough people who you know are telling me about hydration and weighing who are going to tell me I'm doing it wrong, but it works for me especially as a busy mom. So this is the way, this is the no fuss way to do it. All right, so for feeding it, I just have some organic, all-purpose unbleached flour. I got a really amazing sale where I got at a local Mennonite community a huge amount of it. And so that's what I'm using exclusively right now. I sometimes feed my starter with whole wheat that I've milled myself. I sometimes feed it with einkorn. I find my starter to be extremely adaptable. As long as it has food, it is fine. It, it doesn't have to be always einkorn, always unbleached all purpose, always whole wheat. It can be swapped out. So as you can see, I just went over to my Berkey water filter, added some filtered water. I'm going to give it a good stir. I'll show you about what consistency I'm going for here. Maybe like pancake batter. That's about Sometimes I do it thicker, sometimes thinner, but this is about right. Like I said, I don't measure, so this is about as precise as I get with this. Then I also get asked a lot about this lid because people wonder why I put a lid on it. This lid is not airtight, and so it does let air through, so it's actually just fine. I put it in the fridge like this, I put it out on the counter like this. I don't even use a tea towel because the tea towel always sticks and gets sourdough starter up here on it. This is what I do. So I'm gonna leave it on the counter. I'll probably check back in tonight, maybe tomorrow. I'll probably not put this back in the fridge until tomorrow. Now I might end up making something with it. I don't really have plans for breakfast, but if we go to do waffles, I'll probably dip right out of this straight into waffles or I'll put it in the fridge because I don't really want any more starter on hand. And so if I don't make anything right away, it'll just go back in the fridge. I probably won't address this until tomorrow morning. Now there are times where I don't use my starter for a whole week. So if tomorrow I went and put this in the fridge and then didn't touch it again for a week or two, 
it would be completely fine. Now it would be a little bit more sour when I went to pull it back out and I wouldn't wanna feed it from this quantity because I would have to feed it so much flour and water in order to sustain this much starter. So the next thing I'm going to want to do with this starter is make something with it, whether it's tomorrow, right before I put it in the fridge, or whether it is two weeks from now before feeding it again if it has been in the fridge. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, you're gonna see exactly what I do over the course of the next week or two. But I'm just giving you a few hypotheticals because I think people think they have to feed the starter constantly, discard it. You don't. This could just get put straight in the fridge after it sat out a little bit and then not touched again to make something um, a couple weeks from now. But okay, that's it for now. Okay, it's super loud in my house. Sorry about that. I am going to put this starter in the refrigerator until I need it next. I don't really have a plan for it. Um, it's very bubbly. It has risen up to about here and then reduced by half all in the last however many hours it's been. Um, let's see, about 17 hours. All right, I am going to make some sourdough flatbreads this morning. So last time I put this in was, was it yesterday? I guess it was yesterday. And I hadn't fed it since the day before it sat out. I'm going to use this starter straight into the recipe um, in the amount that the starter is called for. I'm not going to feed it first, let it sit out. This is a rule I break constantly and it always still rises so I don't really see why you have to. I'm just being completely honest with you. So my recipe calls for a cup of starter and two cups of flour. I'm just gonna take the cup out of this and then put it right back in the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it again. My sourdough starter is still back in the fridge. This, I'm just wanting to show you something really quick. This is the flatbread dough I put in this morning. It rose quite a bit. It's nice and gassy and airy. And I had just pulled the starter out of the fridge and used it. So that's something that I do often. All right, it is December 9th. I have this is on a starter. The last thing I made with it was the flatbreads. I have some cast iron skillets preheating in the oven and I'm gonna make a couple pizza crusts. That is going to diminish my starter quite a bit. Now I like to diminish it a lot before feeding it again because then you have to feed it as much. If you have this much starter, you need to feed it at least that much flour and water to make it happy. So if I first make something and diminish this down, then it will just be a lot happier starter because it'll have a lot of flour and water to feed on. Now, if I get it down really, really low, which I'm about to show you happening, I will still give it tons of flour and water and that tiny bit of starter will take over all of it and turn it all into starter. It can deal with too much food. It cannot deal with not enough. Now, as you can see right now, this starter is not bubbly. It's been in the fridge, hasn't been fed in days. Still very sour, smells like starter, but it won't get bubbly until I freshly feed it and leave it out again. Do you need pepperoni? Huh? What kind of pizza? What pizza? Yeah, what kind of pizza? I don't know yet. Yeah. I don't know what ingredients I I want pepperoni. I want to make pepperoni pizza. You do? Yes. Pepperoni pizza, my favorite. The starter is down to about here. I used it down to make three pizza crusts. So I'm just gonna dump in some flour and water. And then I'm gonna leave it out till tomorrow. I may or may not use it, I really don't know. Um, tomorrow's Friday, no, I won't be using this. So most likely I'll just feed this and probably in the morning I'll be putting it away. Like I said earlier in the week, I don't like leaving my starter this low. Because if I want to pull it out of the refrigerator and make pancakes, waffles, pizza crust, which are some of my, there's the baby, are some of my go-to fast and easy things to make either for breakfast or lunch or dinner or whatever, those are some of my things that I can make like anytime, no matter what ingredients I have, as long as I have some cheese or, you know, with waffles, I just need starter and eggs. So I don't ever put it away empty. But I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of flour and water 
and I will show you by morning, this will be super bubbly. Now by morning, it will have risen and fallen again. If I were to wake up at some point in the middle of the night, because right now it is like 5 p.m. No, it's not, it's like 4 p.m. So I, they're probably, I probably won't show you this bubbly unless I think of it again at like 10 o'clock tonight, which maybe I'll try. I can show you it bubbly, but by tomorrow morning, it'll have risen and fallen again. So it won't really look that impressive, but it will do a lot of rising between now and then with this much starter plus a whole bunch of flower water. Now, as you can see, I do not measure. I just get the consistency that I like, which is about pancake batter-ish. Just getting all the lumps out. Probably want a little bit more water here. So we're about to here with the starter. It'll get mostly to the top over or tonight and then probably be about back down here when I show you tomorrow. I'll try to remember to show you tonight when it's nice and bubbly and happy. It is 7 a.m. on December 10th. It took a little bit longer to double than I expected because it's cooler in our house. So in the summer, this would happen probably within like six hours. You can see it's right here. I think it was, I don't know, there-ish when I last showed you. It will still fall, but because it's so cool in the house, I don't know if you can see the bubbles. It's very bubbly and it smells great. It's actually perfect to cook with right now, but it definitely takes longer for it to get to this state. That's why with sourdough, with thickness and with the way the dough feels and with the rising, it really takes experience more than it takes like an exact recipe because there are factors like this, like how warm it is in your house and how much water you add, things like that. And I personally just like to go by how it smells, how it feels, rather than specific, but you will get familiar with things like that. So I'm not gonna put this in the fridge just yet. We might make waffles this morning, or within an hour or two, I might just put it back in the fridge. You can see all the bubbles and activity going on in here. We decided to make waffles this morning, so we're gonna be using three cups of sourdough starter. You're gonna make sure to scrape the sides of that. <laughs> right out of the container. Nice bubbly starter. 8 a.m. December 10th. I'm putting it back in the fridge. This leaves me a couple cups to make pizza crust so I won't feed it before. It is December 12th at about 8.45 p.m. Just pulled this starter out of the refrigerator. We're going to get some cinnamon rolls soaking for tomorrow. So we're just going to use the starter right out of this, even though it's been in the fridge for, I don't know, a few days. So we're gonna take the starter component of the recipe directly out of this. And then after that, I'm also going to feed this starter so that I can make or get going tomorrow some sourdough bread. It's getting a little bit low and I do like to make my sourdough bread with freshly fed starter. It works either way, but that is something that I really like to do that with. Not necessarily things like cinnamon rolls because it'll rise either way, it'll be fine. But to get those big holes in the bread, I really do like to have freshly fed starter. Again, I would do it without that, but um, I prefer it. So how much does Starter, are we taking out for our cinnamon rolls, Johanna? Oh, we're gonna take a half cup out. Okay, so we're taking out a half cup for our cinnamon rolls, and then I'm going to feed this a whole bunch of flour and water, probably up to here-ish. Right, we decided we were gonna make sourdough pancakes this morning. So I'm going to take three cups from this jar here. This is before I haven't started making my bread yet today. I'll do that later, but three cups from this and just do some no weight pancakes. So I'll just add the other ingredients. That's, that's all I'm gonna do with the starter though. Now you can make pancakes from sourdough starter that's been in the fridge. I do it all the time. But look how 
fluffy and light and bubbly and nice this is whenever you do have freshly fed starter. It does make a different product, both edible and delicious, but this one better. I got 200 grams on the nose without even trying. What? I am proud of myself. Well done. Right, I'm going to put this back in the fridge. I have really weird lighting because the morning sun is coming in to the east. So it's right about, where are we? Right here. It's bubbly, it's fed. There's enough to make pizza crust or pancakes. So I'm just gonna put it back in the fridge like this because I don't need it anymore today. I'm going to be pulling Sardo Starter out of the fridge. I don't remember the last time I used it was, but I am going to be making bagels for tomorrow. We make these typically every Friday. I'm also going to be making sourdough cinnamon rolls. I know I just made them a few days ago and I don't normally make them that often. I actually probably don't even make them once a month. Normally I'm making things more like sourdough English muffins, which I never made in these whole two weeks, which is funny. But my daughter's 13th birthday is tomorrow, and so we're gonna be making cinnamon rolls in the morning for that. So for these recipes, I'm going to use a half cup for each of them, a half a cup of sourdough starter. It's coming out of the refrigerator. I did not feed it ahead of time. It'll be okay, I'll show you the finished result tomorrow and it'll be just fine. And then I'm gonna actually feed it because I don't wanna deplete it too much, again, so we can make some of those no weight recipes. I probably said that like a thousand times in here. I ended up doubling my batch of bagels. I forgot that I always double my bagel batch. So I just, I guess I got distracted talking to the camera. So I have bagel dough, I have cinnamon roll dough. I am now left with this much starter, which I don't like to keep on hand. So I'm gonna add a whole bunch of flour and water. Yet again, repeating this whole process basically over again.
right, we are looking really bubbly and full. It's hard to see, I feel like, just how bubbly and light it looks here and tall. I don't know what I'm gonna do from here, but this has been, I believe, two weeks, so probably we'll just keep continuing what you've already seen. Well, I hope that this video showing you what I do with my sourdough starter in a given two weeks was helpful for you. I know that a lot of people find sourdough very confusing and intimidating. There's so much information out there and some of it sounds really technical and scary. If you guys follow along with my channel, you know I don't really do anything very technical, maybe even in some ways not the right way, but it works out. The bread rises, the bagels rise. I have delicious results. And so just know you do not have to use your starter daily. You do not have to discard once your starter is established. You can leave it in the refrigerator for a month and it'll be just fine. My sister on a couple of her pregnancies, she got really sick and she left her starter in the refrigerator for an entire first trimester, always okay. We transferred our sourdough starter while we were moving from our last place to this place and that meant that it actually sat in a cooler in the trailer somewhere as we we're getting the floors finished, I don't know, for a month, totally fine. So just be encouraged that it really is simple. I hope that I was able to show you enough things throughout these two weeks because what I did over these last two weeks was very, very typical. And as you can see, I don't use it every day. So I hope this video is even long enough because I just don't. I, whenever I'm testing a recipe for the blog, I find that I keep it on the counter. I use it a lot to get the recipe right. But on the whole, we don't use it every day. We use it three-ish times per week. Some recipes I like to feed it before, some I don't. I've done it both ways and it's always worked out. Let me know down in the comments below, what is the most confusing thing about sourdough starter to you? Was there anything I said today that you didn't know that you thought was different with making a sourdough starter? I would love to do another video where I address some of those questions and concerns, but it's really straightforward. I don't measure as far as flour and water. I don't worry about how long it's in the fridge. I don't even think, okay, it's been, four hours since I last fed it, now I can make this. Never think about any of that stuff. And so it's just very simple little jar that comes in and out as I need it. I add a whole bunch of flour and water if I need more. I don't add very much if I don't. If I look in the fridge and there's not much, well then I can't make pizza crust. If there's a whole bunch, I can make a whole bunch of pizza crust and pancakes or waffles or something that's no weight. Hopefully that's all very straightforward and this helps to make it a little less confusing. I have so many sourdough recipes. So if you want all of those recipes in a book, I actually have an updated version of my Farmhouse Favorites sourdough recipes with all of my recipes that I offer you to download for free. You can get that at bit.ly forward slash farmhouse sourdough. I have everything from sourdough crackers, cobblers, desserts, bagels, English muffins, breads, so many things. You can make everything sourdough if you want to. And I hope that by now I've encouraged you to make your own sourdough starter, which I also have a video and a blog post for. I will link all the resources down below. I have a whole sourdough playlist with every sourdough recipe under the sun. So you can go ahead and check that out. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.